let's get the obvious out of the way right out of the gates. The Tomorrow War is in no way, shape, or form the Edge of Tomorrow. The Tomorrow War stars Chris Pratt doing his best Tom Cruise impression throughout the film. Pratt is essentially the character he makes fun of in Guardians of the Galaxy constantly. He does a lot of steely-eyed looks at the camera, just, just a kind of a closer-up shot of him just going... This is most of the movie. This movie, like so many others, has very lofty aspirations. Uh, it's a Amazon Prime exclusive, I think? I don't know, I didn't even know it existed until like two days ago. I didn't see a trailer, all I saw was the cover art of Pratt, again, looking like he's trying to be Tom Cruise. Has a very um, Edge of Tomorrow, aka Live, Die, Repeat aesthetic to it. Uh, the film certainly doesn't, but that I think is what they were trying to go off of. The script has kind of a Terminator in reverse storyline. It's kind of clever. I mean, the premise is good. The premise is solid. Instead of sending someone to the past to kill someone, they're sending groups of people to the future to fight in a war that's going to take place 30 years from now. Uh, from 2022, I think, is when the film starts. So it's in like the 2050s, somewhere around there when uh, all hell breaks loose. Everything about this film makes no sense. The script even has the audacity to point out that if they send people at certain times, they will cause a paradox. This whole goddamn movie's a paradox. Essentially, Chris Pratt gets drafted to go to the future where he's gonna see a grown-up version of his daughter, who's played by um, the hot chick from Chuck and Handmaid's Tale. Yvonne Strahovski, I believe is how you pronounce the name. She's acting her heart out here. She's crying, she's, she's tough, she's independent. She's a strong female lead. Chris Pratt, however, because he doesn't have the comedy to fall back on, I think he has a hard time pulling off the drama. Uh, it could be the director, it could be the incompetent script, I don't know, but there's a scene early on when he meets his father, uh, played by J.K. Simmons, who's always, always phenomenal. But there's no music in the background, and it's just these two having an intimate moment together, sharing, you know, past trauma and whatever. And Pratt, I'm just not buying it. He's just trying so hard to be stoic all the time, even kind of giving the cadence of the whisper talking that Cruz is known for. He can't pull it off. It reminded me of Brie Larson as Captain Marvel, where, where she's just a lot of time posing and not really becoming a character. She's just doing what she thinks superheroes should look and act like. That's what Pratt's doing for the sci-fi action role. And we can break this down a million different ways. And I know it's an action movie at the end of the day. It's, it's kind of a sci-fi, fun, you know, nonsensical thing. But the problem is it's not having any fun. There's, there is a comic relief character. He's sparsely used though. And there's just no, there's no real excitement or joy out of watching this type of movie. It's kind of like watching two and a half hours of video game cutscenes, which I brought up previously in Fast and the Furious 9. I think it's just going to be an issue movies have going forward when we get so much reliance on CG work that we don't put anything into actual sets, uh, puppeteering, you know, character design that you can see physically. Everything is just an actor in front of a green screen, so nothing has weight. Nothing has emotion. Now, if you just want two plus hours of spectacle with bombastic music that feels awfully out of place, uh, and, and by the way, that music, the theme song's cool. I don't think it really fits here at all. It's way too, way too powerful. Um, it reminds me of a different movie and I can't for the life of me remember. But if you watch this film, uh, let me know in the comments if you know what movie I'm thinking of. But it, it came out around the 90s action film and it just has almost an identical sound to the score. It bothers me that I can't think of it, but that's all I have to give you to go on. There's clearly money put into this movie. There's explosions everywhere. There's a big scale to it yet somehow it still has a, a massive cheapness to it all. I don't know if it's just the lighting or the, the lack of atmosphere, but something is way off in this. It, it feels like a movie that should be straight to DVD that's ripping off the popular version, which I guess would be Edge of Tomorrow. This is like the, the fake version of Edge of Tomorrow you used to find at movie store rentals at the, at the top shelf and you'd pick it up and it'd have like Casper Van Dion as the main actor. No one under the age of 30 is going to know what the hell I'm talking about. But anyway, it'd be like Anaconda, the movie with J-Lo. And then uh, the one that went straight to DVD was Viper and Python. Those were the knockoffs. There was always a knockoff. This is the knockoff 
They just have more budget behind it and some bigger names. The action is varied though. There is a lot of it. It's inconsistent as all hell, of course. Uh, early on, these aliens, I can't remember what they're called, white, white shooters or uh, uh, nail pushers or massive inconsistencies when battling these aliens too. Some of them are bullet sponges early on. They shoot this, their little talon spike things constantly. They're fast, they're tough to hit. Um, and then later they're just kind of like picking them off after a couple shots each. The worst culprit though is when they're escaping from a lab or a hospital or something and they're on the streets and they're running across these open platforms and the heavy set gentleman who doesn't know anything about firearms or saving himself, that's fair. These are all just people, regular Joes thrown into the mix. He falls down to clearly his doom as hundreds of aliens pour after them and Chris Pratt being America's hero is like, whoa, I got to save this guy that fell like 30 feet down into question mark area while aliens are running after us and while bombs are dropping. I need to go down there and save this guy I met like two hours ago. What? So he's like, <laughs> jumps down, whoosh, dude that he's gonna save, guy that he's gonna save, oh, dead, instantly dead. Woman drops down, dying. He, he screwed over the entirety of the team to be a hero for no reason at all. So he gets these people killed and then immediately runs away from the explosions that were taking place. He accomplished nothing other than getting people killed in such a preposterous scenario. I, I just, I, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. I also don't understand the logic behind the people in the future. They know that shit's gone south. Why would they keep bringing humans to the worst possible scenario, especially ones that don't know what they're doing at all? Why wouldn't you send them back earlier in time to stop the event? It takes Chris Pratt's wife to come up with a suggestion. Just some regular housewife, she's like, why, maybe you guys aren't going back to the right time. Maybe, did you ever think about that? And Chris Pratt's like, holy shit. Even if I went along with the dumbass premise of sending people to that exact moment in time to essentially die, why don't you give them rocket launchers or laser guns? You have time travel. Are you telling me you can come up with better weapons than the standard like AR-15s or whatever they're shooting? Especially when you know they're not piercing these aliens worth a shit. Come up with better weaponry. I will say the alien designs themselves, those are pretty cool. I like that. I like that they have like these tentacle things and they're shooting shit out and they're like <laughs> climbing up the walls. <laughs> Jumping down. <laughs> taking guys out. That's that's good stuff. I eat that up. Sound design is probably the best part of the film. Sound, sound design, that's where we're at. And J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons is always the best part of the film, though. Thank you for finally allowing J.K. Simmons to show off his jacked body that he spent months and months training for so he could have, like, one minute of time in Batman v Superman and Justice League. What a waste. What an absolute waste. Every single cliche you've seen in a movie of this type is present here. You have the constant people self-sacrificing when they really don't need to. Like, oh, there's a wave of aliens coming and bombs are falling. Let me stay back and shoot to buy you zero seconds. This happens constantly in the film. There's people that are like willing to die whenever possible. Like, I wanna die, not you, me, I get to do this one. I knew things were gonna be an issue when the film starts with a bunch of people dropping hundreds of feet out of the sky and landing in a pool and surviving. I, I mean, I, listen, science isn't my strong suit, but when you drop from hundreds of feet in the air, I'm pretty sure you don't land in a six foot deep pool and pop back up. You're gonna be hitting that cement at the bottom of the water pretty hard. You're gonna have some broken limbs, if not uh, be splattered into the ground. This frustrates me because it's one of those movies as I'm watching, I'm just checking off in my mind all the things that kind of annoy the shit out of me. And I know I'm gonna forget most of them while I'm recording this video. But I don't wanna take notes because I don't want watching movies to feel like a job. You know, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be escapism. I brought up Edge of Tomorrow a few times because there's obvious comparisons. It wants to be like that movie, but that movie's fantastic. I would almost consider doing a movie feuds between this film and Edge of Tomorrow just to 
you know, glow a little bit more about that film and do the comparison thing, but I don't think anybody cares about this. I think, I think within a week, no one remembers this exists and we move on with our day. The dudes doing the CG work here must have had carte blanche to just do whatever they wanted. They're clearly having a good time. There's, there's scenes where there's just thousands of aliens running up these buildings after the people. And then immediately in the next scene, when it's, when it's cut to actual shots of actors, they're shooting like two of them for the entire time. They're, they're fighting two aliens when the shots before were seeing tons and tons of these things. They would have been overwhelmed at any second. But uh, there's just inconsistencies all over this thing. CG animators told to make a chopper go flying overhead. So he's like, oh God, yeah. <laughs> chopper goes by and then you, you can see the animators like, let's do it again. So then he brings the helicopter back the other way. <laughs> And Pratt's like, um, I'm doing stuff, right? That you're gonna add cool shit all around me? Cause it's just me here right now. I guess the bottom line is if you're looking for something really dumb and mindless that you can just watch over lunch, you know, an extended lunch, this would be fine. It's just, I, I look back at movies like Independence Day, which clearly have aged. But there's just such a charm to it, and there's such likable characters, even if they are one-dimensional, and, and there's tons of cliches in that one too. It's done so well, and with such a fun spirit to it all, and with some epic lines, and with with these cool alien designs and stuff, that it just, all the, all the like, top layer bullshit just melts away, and you're left with a really cool movie. Here, they had the concept. I think the concept was sound, but the lifeless dialogue, the uninteresting cliched characters, the weird color palette choices, the lack of any energy and momentum to the picture, and the constant head-scratching decisions with the storyline really just pull you out of the film. I mean, would it have been that hard for the people from the future to be like, we're gonna share our technology with you and we're gonna show you how to use time travel and stuff? They don't say that! They never once mention how the people of Earth in 2022 know how to use time travel. Like, it's implied, I guess, that they pe these people taught them, but shit, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. And to just gloss over it and have the audience kind of scratching their heads for so much of the film thinking like, how does this make sense? What are we doing here? How, how is he with her right now? It's not a good, it's not a good look. It's not a good play. Since this movie did remind me of Fast 9, the Fast Saga, I guess I'll give it the same score. I'm gonna do four out of 10 alien talons uh, because one of the guy, one of the people collects them for, for, for reasons, I don't know. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the rant. I have plenty more on this channel along with my flagship show, Movie Feuds, where I take two movies, pit them head to head. You can find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. I have a second channel called Adam Olinger. I'm on TikTok. I'm all over, I'm all over the place.